Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Robert Kaufman Fabrics, quality fabrics for quilting. Sulky, express yourself with Sulky and create with confidence. And The Warm Company, inspiring products for creative people. Hello, I'm Jolie Hein Sayasan, and today my guest is Linda Beach, who is an artist from Estes Park, Colorado. And today we are going to be talking about her commission work, how that has gotten started. And I just, I know little about this, so what is the process for getting a commission or finding a proposal or how, how did that all start and how did you get involved? Well, first of all, thank you for having me here today. Thank and you. I was lucky enough very early in my career to be approached by someone asking me to do a commission. Hmm. And uh, the commissions I'll talk about today are all public commissions. I've done a few private commissions, um, but I find it easier and, and more rewarding to do public commissions. But initially someone found me uh, through my website and uh, approached me and asked me to put in a bid for a uh, project that was going to be put up at a VA hospital in my area and this woman in charge of the project enjoyed quilting so she went looking for quilt artists and found me. Oh. Um, it was a bid process, there were others that she invited uh, but I was lucky enough to have been chosen for the project and and won the bid. And, and won the bid, and that gave me the confidence. I enjoyed the process so much that I started looking for other projects on my own. Because mm. I find public commissions, um, with the piecing technique I do, I enjoy showcasing large pieces of fabric, which sort of means I end up working very large, which sometimes is a little too large for a private home. So public installations, um, public uh, commissions are perfect for what I like to do, and I enjoy the challenge. Interesting. So, so when you, even though you were asked to submit, what is involved with a, a packet or your proposal that you would put together for, for a commission like this? Well, they're all slightly different, um, but usually you're submitting images uh, to someone. You're stating a budget of how long and how much will this project cost. Um, a lot of times, uh, depending on the call for proposal, and I found them all slightly different, depending whether you're working with an art consulting company, or as in my case, I've done a lot of 1% for arts that are for state governments. Um, most of our mm. states actually have this program, which is a great one. Um, but uh, you're submitting examples of your work, you're submitting a description, a budget, and they will give you very specific criteria of what they want. Um, so it helps to follow the recommendations to the letter and uh, submit the best ideas that you can possibly come up with. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I've, I find um, through newspaper articles or online searches, uh, I usually can come across calls for art. Oh, I and see. if it's a project that is something that I feel an inspiration for, or feel like that I can accomplish, mm -hmm. uh, then I will put forth a bid. Okay. So you mentioned that the first one was for a hospital, mm -hmm. and can we see what you submitted for that initially, or any of your paperwork or, uh, or yeah, sketches? Yeah, I do have or? some that I brought with me. Um, like I said, most of my work, I think maybe because it's nature-based, um, I find a lot of hospitals I'm a good fit for. Um, in the case of the one project that I brought today uh, was for an elementary school. Oh, okay. And the call for art was uh, for an elementary school whose uh, emblem was the American bald eagle. Oh, they okay. asked that you incorporate that. They asked that you incorporate the school colors of black, white, and red. So this would be an example of something I would submit as my initial sketch. Um, usually they're not asking for anything specific. They just want to have a general understanding of what you do I see. Um, and what your idea is. And then if you're chosen, they'll usually ask for something uh, much more specific. Uh, but in the case of this, I knew it was going to go against a very large area. Mm -hmm. So I designed something that was three foot high and six foot wide. So the eagle wingspan was at least five and a half feet. Wow. Uh, so when it comes to doing something like that with animals where it has to be precise, mm -hmm. I start out with a very small sketch. Okay. Uh, I find it easier to get the details um, more precise in a smaller scale mm -hmm. and then gradually enlarge it. And in the end, I ended up taking this to a copy center and having them printed out five and a half feet long. Oh, I um, see. So I could do my actual pattern 
very precise. So you, so when you reached a certain point, then you just took them to have it enlarge it, as opposed to using a projector. Or? Well, as opposed to me drawing it freehand on a table, you know, mm -hmm. when you get to working on that large of a scale, sometimes, uh, especially when an eagle it needs to be very precise in the details. Right. It's easier um, to have them enlarge it rather than being able to stand back and get the perspective mm -hmm. and, and get have the, the right, details. Have all of the, I guess perspective is the right word, mm -hmm. or the, the right lines and the right everything. Right. Yeah, that would make me very nervous. <laughs> well, it's so easy when you're working with animals or people, one little bit of difference uh, in a line around a face or um, some physical feature and it distorts everything. So I did it that way. And other projects I've done um, through art consultants, um, there are a couple of different companies that I've worked for, and once you start working with them, and if they like your work, um, luckily enough, they'll come to you for other projects, so you really don't Ooh. have to search them out. Right. Uh, another project I've done, which was really sort of a fun challenge, was one for a hospital in Chicago. Uh, they had worked oh. with me before, so I got the phone call. I did not have to put out too specific of a bid. And during the course of our phone conversation, she had said it'll be for a neonatal unit. We would like mm -hmm. maternal themes. Um, we want something that references the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it would be fun if you put poetry into it. Wow. And, well, I'd never done poetry in any of my work. And so I thought, well, that's going to be a bit of a fun challenge, which is why I like commission work. You know, it gets right. me outside of my normal box. And do you write poetry just for yourself? Or I, I don't write never poetry. Before? I don't read poetry, <laughs> I have to admit. So it was, like I said, a challenge. But what little I know of poetry immediately, I thought of Carl Sandburg mm -hmm. uh, in Chicago. So these are the sketches that I came up with. Oh, wow. They wanted two pieces. Um, and they're both fairly large, about three feet by uh, six feet wide. So I had plenty of room, as you can see here in the first one, uh, the maternal themes of a deer mm -hmm. and a baby fawn. I have the city of Chicago. And looking, believe me, I looked through every line of Carl Sandburg's to find something with a maternal theme. But eventually I found something that I was able to do in a quilting stitch across the night sky. And then the companion piece was um, based in a city park, city buildings uh, in the background with uh, more quilting stitches in the rolling grass of the trees. So oh, nice. And a bird this time instead of, robin instead and of a, the deer. A robin and different babies in a robin's nest there to reference the maternal theme. So. How nice. And these are hanging? These are hanging, hanging in the Northwestern Memorial Hospital, downtown Chicago, How there in their nice. neonatal unit. And like I said, this is not something I would normally do in my own uh, course of work, my own inspiration. So it's kind of fun to do something different and stretch outside of your, uh, obviously the poetry was outside of your comfort zone. Yes, so. and, and I don't usually do urban landscapes of any sort, so. And then in other cool. cases when <laughs> I've done uh, proposals, uh, there was one, and this is sort of like what a sample call for proposal would look like um, for an elementary school. They oh, give I you see. pictures of some of the possible artwork sites, so you're able to look through that and maybe gather some inspiration and in, an idea of what you might want to do. but. I had uh, looked at this package and came up with several sketches, uh, all of them oh tree my. themed here. But funnily enough, they, they looked at that, rejected every single one of them, but they had looked at my website, liked my other work, and said, we like your work, we'd like you for the project, but please do something totally different. So please don't, we like you what you do, but we please like don't you, do any of that. We don't like your ideas, so, <laughs> which was fine. And, and I think that's one thing uh, when you do commissions, you need to be flexible and you need to be open with ideas. And mm -hmm. they had looked at my website, saw the tree imagery that I did and said, you know, we have this photo that we took uh, and this work was going in the library, a photo from the library window of a famous mountain that overlooked the school. They sent mm -hmm. me the photo and uh, this is the quilt. They wanted me to copy the mountain Oh my goodness. And put some of my tree imagery that I'm usually a little bit uh, more well known for into the quilt. So they actually sent you even more specifically what they wanted as opposed to just dimensions or theme or right. they actually ask you to work off of something that they gave you. Exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. which, which, like I said, I, I think you need to be, when working with commissions, you need to be open and flexible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I certainly was happy enough to do the mountain scene. Um, and, and what sort of time frame do they, I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming it depends on the commission, but what sort mm -hmm. of time frame is usually involved from like a start to finish? Is it a six month time frame from the time that you 
receive the the bid or you receive the job and then you and send them the completed work do you send them work in the middle or do they or like through the process or do you just say okay now it's mine now I'm gonna go for it and then they just end up with what you give them well six months is probably a, a pretty good average of the time that you're given um, some are a little bit quicker and as far as the progress along the way, they're all different. People I've worked with before, um, some of the art consulting companies, they're very comfortable um, in, in not having you report, just giving mm -hmm. them the final product once you've discussed the initial idea. Uh, others, they like to see progression photos, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm happy to do, you know, give them updates. Uh, I always like to, regardless of who it is, once we've settled on an initial sketch, I do like to gather the fabrics that I'm going to use mm -hmm. and take a photograph and let them see the color palette oh. and some of the fabrics that I have in mind too. I think that's well, helpful That's a wonderful idea and so. would reassure them also that that you are all on the right path, even if you're separated from, in this case, Miles and my, you know, you're in another part of the country right. while, while you're working on something for Chicago, for example. Right, so. which makes it much easier with the internet and digital photography. It's so easy just to s take a couple of quick photographs and say, these are the sample fabrics. And in my work especially, you know, I think you can tell here, this isn't the most exciting sketch to look at. It's very rough. Um, almost monochromatic, but if they see the fabrics that I'm going to use and all the wonderful mm -hmm. colors and patterns, uh, I think it helps um, them to be much more excited about the project mm -hmm. and get my ideas across a and little just, bit better. Just bring it all to life ahead of time. Yeah. So. I which I think is important when you're working with fabrics for them to see the actual fabrics. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. That was very, very informative and I think I'm going to have to go start looking for bids out there. <laughs> <laughs> start getting online. To start getting online. So um, if you would like to see more of Linda's work, we are also fortunate to be able to feature a gallery of more of her quilts on our website, quiltersnewsletter.com. And thank you very much. Thank you for having me here today. Quilters Newsletter TV, the quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Robert Kaufman Fabrics, quality fabrics for quilting. Sulky. Express yourself with Sulky and create with confidence. And The Warm Company, inspiring products for creative people.